Hello and welcome to another Storyline Tips and Tricks video. And in these videos, I take you through some key skills or knowledge that um, can be really useful when creating your e-learning courses to really elevate your e-learnings. And today we are going to have a look at custom buttons and custom navigation and explore why you might use this and how it can be beneficial when working with um, branding or a specific kind of look and feel. If you don't know, my name is Emma Berry. I'm an e-learning developer and instructional designer, and I am on a one woman mission to um, push the boundaries of Storyline and just really um, improve e-learning as a whole to make it more engaging and to really support and help others that are just coming into the industry maybe and are looking to learn some of those key Storyline skills. So let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the how of creating these custom buttons down here, I want to talk a little bit about why you might use custom navigation. So the first and kind of most obvious one is um, a design feature. So if you're working with branding um, for a specific company, for example, and they have a colour scheme or they have a particular aesthetic that you want to replicate, uh, the storyline player can be a little bit restrictive with this, uh, where you've got the next and previous buttons that would usually be down here. You can change the font of these and you can choose to display them as text, text and icon or just an icon. Um, but that's about kind of as far as you can go with really customizing them. You can add a sort of little padlock icon if it's locked. You can't move them around the screen. Um, they are what they are. So creating custom buttons allows you to... Um, be a bit more flexible with design and with color and with imagery too for your navigation. Another reason might be to display extra information. So if I click on the info button on this slide, you'll notice that we've got um, the learner's name. We've also got their progress through the e-learning. They can revisit navigation help uh, and they can revisit a section as well. You could even take this one step further and have their progress through each section too. So this is just a kind of compact, easy to access place um, that provides extra information for the learner to then see how they're doing and to jump to um, different parts of the e-learning as well. So if I click that one and close it. Now, a reason why you may not choose or what I wouldn't recommend doing um, using custom navigation is if you want slide by slide navigation. So if I had the menu present here, I could click on it and see all the slides within my e-learning. I wouldn't really recommend doing that on a custom menu like this, just because it will get incredibly long, unless you've got a very short e-learning that's, you know, 10 to 15 slides. Um, but anything longer than that, I think it would just get messy. Um, these kind of menus are really good if you want to jump to a specific section or um, you want to access extra information or there's downloads or a notebook or something like that. And for this example in particular, uh, I wanted the custom navigation uh, as a kind of design feature, really. So I've designed this in a way that this cream colored box looks like a its own kind of interface, its own window. And I didn't want the learner to have to then reach down in the bottom right to choose next or previous. I wanted um, it to all kind of be together and to look really um, compact. Okay, so there is kind of our whys, so why you might decide to go for custom navigation. Let's now have a look at the how, and I will talk you through how I created these buttons here. Okay, so we're back into preview mode now, and you'll notice that my three buttons down the bottom, the next and the previous button can be selected on the slide. If I just pull up the states, you can see we've also got our hover animation here, which creates that kind of color wipe when the, the um, user moves their mouse over the icon. And this is a real bonus with creating custom buttons and custom navigation um, that you can really play around with the design. I'll show you another example of um, using a hover animation on buttons. So with these two here, you can see if I move my mouse over, we get this again a kind of color wipe interaction and that's just another example of adding an extra level of you know 
making it more dynamic. OK, so back to the other slide. Now you'll notice these two buttons here, so my locked next button and my previous button, I can select on the slide and I can edit them and add the triggers and do whatever I need to. But if I try and click on the info button, it won't let me. And this is because the menu, so the navigation menu, is built into the slide master. So the reason that I've done this is so that you're not having kind of extra triggers, extra layers on each individual slide. And also, if you did have this navigation menu copied onto every single slide, you'd then have to do the focus order for it. Whereas if you do it in the master, you only have to do that once and it will stay in the same place on your slide, on every slide um, throughout the rest of your e-learning. So if we jump into the slide master, I go to my first slide, we've now got our editable icon. And if I click on to menu, you can see there is our menu. And that is as a separate layer. So we've got a really simple trigger. I've got my icon in the middle of the slide and it's set to show the layer menu when the user then clicks this info button. So if I go into my menu layer, this is where it gets a little bit more complex. So if like me, you want to have an animation as the menu opens, so this is set to just wipe up and then wipe back down as you click um, this arrow here. To do this, you'll need to play around with your timeline. So you'll notice that I've got a really short timeline, but I've got a cue point in the middle. So as my menu comes in, so as it wipes up and all of these little boxes and buttons appear, I've then got my cue point and I've created a trigger to pause the timeline when it gets to this cue point. I've then given my buttons and my sort of menu interface um, exit animations. So if I click on this one, you can see that it has a fade out animation. So essentially we're just reversing what it's just done. So the timeline will stay paused while the learner kind of reads their menu, decides what they want to do. And then when the learner clicks um, a button or clicks this button here, which is the close button. Instead of it hiding the layer, we're going to resume the timeline. And what this will do is then carry on playing and the fade out and the wipe out animation will play, which makes it then appear that the menu is slowly kind of wiping itself out instead of just instantly disappearing. The last trigger is to just hide the layer when the timeline ends um, on this menu layer here, and that will then take it back to this nice plain slide and back to whatever slide the learner is currently on. So it's almost a little bit like a light box, but it's all hidden within the master so that you don't have any of these extra triggers or extra layers on each individual slide. If you are gonna to choose to do it this way with the animations and kind of the um, entrance and exit animations, you will have to make sure that your layer is set to reset to initial state when revisiting. Otherwise, it will play your animation once and then when the learner clicks this info button again, it won't replay that animation because it will see that the timeline's already been through. So you've got to make sure that it's gonna reset every time. This won't affect your variable. So if you, like me, you decide to have a progress variable, it won't affect that at all. So they're really simple to set up. It's just three triggers. And then you can put in whatever you like, really. You can design this however you want. Um, as you can see here, I've added some section um, buttons so the learner can revisit sections. So they could click on time management, for example, and jump back to that section. Um, you could put something else here. There could be a link back to a main menu, or there could be a link to the final assessment, or whatever it is that you feel that somebody might need um, in your custom menu. I always tend to include a navigation help button just to um, allow people to revisit how to actually kind of go through the e-learning. And I've got my progress score here, which is just a variable of how many slides the uh, learner has complete essentially. So the more slides they complete, this will obviously go up and allow them to see how far they're doing and how they're getting on.
And this is really not that hard to set up at all. Um, it's literally just made up of shapes. So we've got uh, a rectangle, we've got some buttons, um, and these are just square buttons as well. There's no custom illustrations, there's no custom graphics. Um, it's really easy to create something that looks as nice and simple and clean as this. I also add a semi-transparent kind of dark background as well. And this just means that when the learner opens the menu, the slide that they're currently on is kind of darkened a little bit just to make this menu stand out. I'm working with quite a limited color scheme here. So I didn't want this cream rectangle to then blend into the background of the slide. So it just makes the menu stand out and kind of lets the learner know that they've opened something else. Another key benefit of creating this in your master as well is that if you do want to change anything at any point, so you decide you're changing the name of a section or you want to add something else in, you don't then have to do that change for every single slide. If you copy this onto um, a slide by slide basis, you'd have to then go in each slide and make those changes. Whereas if you change it in the master, it's changed for your whole e-learning. So it just makes everything a lot quicker, a lot easier. But like I said, do also be aware of accessibility um, with these. Make sure you set your focus order, um, turn on any alt text, turn off any um, images that aren't needed for accessibility purposes. Um, and that will, again, do it for your whole e-learning then. Um, so a huge plus with putting it in the master. So let's just reopen the slide one more time so you can see it in action. There we go. So if I click this info button, you can see it wipes up and opens our menu. And if I click again, it then reverses the animation and creates this kind of nice, almost like a soft open, soft close, a little bit like those cabinets that kind of have a nice soft closing. It's a bit like that, um, which is, again, is not necessary, but I think it just creates a softer, um, softer opening as opposed to a really abrupt of the menus in your face and then suddenly the menu's gone again. Um, it just looks a bit more professional. And there we go. That is custom navigation. Um, and in a later video, I will go over sort of customizing buttons a little bit more, but that's a whole other video in itself. But hopefully this has just given you a couple of ideas as to how you can add extra um, menus into your e-learning or just improve um, the menu that you're using.